93.9 WKYS, the only station bringing you Kiss Fest 2018. Dominique the TV here on your Money Making Monday, getting you through your work day. And as I told you before, I have some very special guests in the building because we are gearing up for something very exciting. We have Mayor Muriel Bowser's Maternal and Infant Health Summit this coming Wednesday. We also have Miss Kathy Hughes in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. And we even have Dr. Nesbitt here, which is uh, which is a, a big deal because we have a lot of things to cover with this maternal and infant summit. Now, this isn't the first time you've worked with national leaders on the maternal and, and infant um, situation here, right here in D.C. So why is it so important for everyone to come out this Wednesday? Well, it is the first time that we're going to host an event in uh, D.C. And mm-hmm. you know, this week is um, the start of the Congressional Black Caucus mm-hmm. and all the events surrounding the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, and we do a lot of social things to support the caucus. Uh, and this year, I challenged my team to to really focus on an issue uh, that is near and dear to our hearts and where we have um, some work to do. And that's on uh, making sure moms and babies are as healthy as possible um, before uh, childbirth, during childbirth, and after childbirth. I want to start off, if I could, by welcoming the mayor to our airways yes. and also Dr. Nesbik. I am so happy to have both of you here with us. Thanks for having us. On uh, Dominique the Diva. Yes. Uh, KYS show. <laughs> Big yes. kiss to all of our uh, family listeners. Mayor, which came first? Your interest in becoming a mother, and congratulations Thank on you. yesterday's yes, christening. That's so cute. Thank you. Oh. She's a sweetie. <laughs> or was it because of wanting to be a mother that you started to address health issues facing women? No, we have been, I will tell you, and I'm, I'm very privileged to be Miranda's mother, and she's she's a doll. Um, but we, with Dr. Nesbitt, who is the district's doctor, uh, I recruited Dr. Excuse Nesbitt. me, that means we can all come to you. Yes, we that was, that what that means? For everything. Okay. Uh, she leads the Department of Health, but more than that, she is uh, the spokesperson for all how we can all live um, healthier lives in our, in our city. Uh, and we have been focused on how uh, to make sure women and babies are healthier. Um, and so certainly uh, I'm interested in making sure that Miranda has a, a healthy uh, first 12 months. Um, but we know that is also a critical time for babies uh, across Washington, D.C. So we have a few initiatives. The mm-hmm. summit uh, introduced a piece of legislation to the council earlier in the year called the Babies Bill. And we're looking for um, their action on that. But I will tell you about my experience in the last four months that so many women I have come to me in a personal way. I'm sure that you've had this experience, um, whether they're adopting like um, I did or they're thinking about having a baby, they're thinking about their fertility or they're new moms and they're just trying to figure out uh, how their new uh, transition uh, mm-hmm. is going to be. Uh, and uh, so many people uh, have personal experiences, but uh, like you and Dr. Nesbitt, there are back best practices out there. So we're not reinventing the wheel every single time. And we'll have an app- opportunity this Wednesday mm-hmm. in a day long summit, and the public is invited uh, to, to come free. and talk. It's absolutely it's free. free. Yes, <laughs> Put Dr. that word Nesbitt out there. is paying for everything. <laughs> there we go, Dr. Nesbitt. Free. The mayor's permission. Right. <laughs> and for those that, that are listening, this this is a free summit. And is, is this for the young lady, like you said, who's pregnant or thinking about okay. becoming pr- pregnant? What type of information can they look forward to leaving with? So we have a broad uh, target audience. Um, we're uh, reaching out to expectant, expectant mothers, new mothers, um, people who support mothers and families uh, to come out for this summit. But we're also targeting, targeting the health professionals, so people who provide care uh, to women in our community-based organizations and grassroots organizations. Because what we know is so much that's going to help improve the health of mothers in our communities at large is the people who provide those services mm-hmm. and making sure, as the mayor mentioned, that we put in place best practices. Uh, For as much as we want women to have the information that they need to have healthy lives before they become pregnant, when they're pregnant and after they're pregnant, uh, to be able to really invest in their own health and the health of their infants, if they're going to health care providers and community-based organizations who don't have the best available knowledge to provide to those women, we're not going to move the needle in the way that we want to. Um, So we're reaching out to a broad audience. Uh, We've got the best experts here in the district, um, as well as bringing in some of our 
our national experts um, to be able to share the information that they have had they have and we're going to have a resource fair yeah. um, so some we've got a lot of women in the district who have access to information and resources but don't know how to tap into that information so we're going to bring all of those things um, to them at the convention center this Wednesday I think that is important for every woman who is listening to this broadcast this morning to make some time maybe you can't stay all day but mm-hmm. you need to come because I'd like to talk about the situation since Serena Williams is the number one news person uh, today. Uh Uh, She almost died after childbirth. And it's so very interesting because, quite frankly, reviewing your uh, material and the things that the mayor sent to me, I realized that I had complications afterwards. Too young to know there were not programs like what we have now in the District of Columbia to help me understand why I was so sick for Mm -hmm. so long, almost until my child was six months old. No one explained anything to me. Mm -hmm. I thought that was just a part of normal childbirth. Mm -hmm. Thank God I was only 17, so I was healthy and young, so my body was able to fight back. But so many women die after giving Mm -hmm. birth and not know what's going on. Absolutely. So I'd like to encourage everybody who's in the KISS family to come by for as long as you can possibly stay. It's free. The information, you you could be an aunt, you could Mm -hmm. be a grandmother, Mm -hmm. you could be a neighbor Mm -hmm. that you know someone on your block is pregnant or planning to have children. We need to inform ourselves, Dr. Nesbitt and and Mayor Bowser, why is health care so challenging for women of color? Well, you know, we talk about it from the perspective of being in a healthy relationship, right? And and that's fundamental for anything we're talking about, whether we're talking about women's health um, or any type of health care that we want people to have. Uh, there are healthcare professionals out there who want people to ask them questions, right? So we have to really debunk those myths and get into healthy relationships. If you go to a healthcare professional, healthy what, relationship with your doctor. That's right. Yes. Okay. That's right. I was like, wait, that's right. I'm getting there, Mayor. Push me, like, push with me, the doctor me, right? Or with, the, right. with the mayor. So, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. So that's that. That's exactly the point. So when you go to see a doctor, a nurse midwife, a nurse practitioner, a PA, and you don't feel comfortable asking questions then we want you to get in a different relationship with a different health professional where you feel comfortable enough asking questions. Because we don't, as you mentioned, Ms. Hughes, we don't want people to have a baby and not feel comfortable enough asking questions if their body doesn't feel right. Um, Because you and we don't know you have the power to do that. One of the things that is very, very, very common in the black community, we don't question our doctors or our ministers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we question our mayor. <laughs> like, I second well, that, but not I always everything. Right, okay. Right. First thing I asked you is Miranda, <laughs> uh, the mother, uh, grandmother. Okay, okay. We we will question but public figures, but we just take doctors' words as the gospel truth. Mm-hmm. And, and doctors don't feel if, take offense, you know, and we don't take offense to people wanting to know what's going on with their bodies. We're trained. I mean, the, the, the word comes from to teach. So we're trained to be able to explain to you what's going on. And we want you to have your healthiest life and to be the best you. Um, so you're to ask questions. You're to ask what's going on. What should I expect? Uh, and if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you're not in a healthy relationship with a health care provider. And we encourage you to find someone where you feel comfortable you know, enough Ms. doing Hughes, that. It's interesting that you say that because we uh, visited Cuba recently. Uh, And for all of the challenges that there are in Cuba, it has one of the world's best health care systems. Really? Absolutely. They have wings for reflexology. Yes. Which just blew me away because the head of the Reflexology Association for many years was a D.C. sister. Is that right? And so uh, she would keep me abreast of what was going on. And it blew my mind that a hospital in Cuba where they're saying, it's underdeveloped, mm-hmm. they don't have resources, we'd be sophisticated and advanced enough to have wings to treat disease naturally instead of medication. Absolutely. They, they've, they've had incredible advances in training doctors as well. But my observation was, to Dr. Nesbitt's point, is that the distance between a patient and the doctor was much shorter than it is here. Okay. Uh, so the doctor lived above the clinic, in the neighborhood, and so ah, people accessible. felt very comfortable, mm-hmm. not just accessible uh, and physically, um, but people could, they didn't have that fear of talking. Gotcha. 
talking to the doctor. They knew the doctor. They knew the doctor. And so that is part of what our goal is to make sure that people, and Dr. Nesbitt always talks about, ask your doctor, talk to your doctor, um, because we can can shorten that space between the patient and the doctor. Not the literal space, um, but that space. And part of that is also uh, we want educated consumers. Do you know more than 98% of people in Washington, D.C. have health insurance? Right now, they can be connected to a medical home. To their 98% cr- 98% of your residents in this city have medical insurance. Wow. So they don't have to... F- Excuse me, that has to be a high it's, statistic it's, for the country. It mm-hmm. is a high statistic for... They may be among the highest uh, in, in the nation. And we're very proud of that. Um, but our outcomes don't match that level of insurance. That's right. So that's how we know we have work to do. Um, and we're talking about maternal and infant health right now, um, but we could we could say similar things for people taking care of their hypertension, um, taking care and managing uh, their diabetes and making sure they're living long and healthy lives. Mm -hmm. So there are all kinds of things that would benefit from people not going to the emergency room Mm -hmm. when it's too late Mm -hmm. or their conditions are too Mm -hmm. advanced. Of course, our emergency rooms are there for that, but we know that they would have much better care and probably better outcomes if they were managing um, their chronic conditions Uh, and certainly managing their plans to give birth uh, by going to see their doctors early. You have mayors from around the country coming. Talk about that. Yes, well, I'm really um, excited because I've had the opportunity now to be mayor of my hometown for almost four years, and God willing, I'll get another four years to do it. And then we're going to change the law so you can get another four years (laughs) after that. Oh, that's not a law in the district, Kathy. Oh, no, no, no. Talk about it. There's no term limit. can't be mayor for life. (laughs) <laughs> Can we do it? Can we hashtag that? There's only that? one mayor for life. Let's we get it that. going. <laughs> we know that. Um, but I have participated in the U.S. Conference of Mayors for the last four years and had an opportunity just to meet my colleagues who are doing incredible work. Uh, and so we have an opportunity to bring those uh, mayors together. And we happen to have one of the largest classes of African-American mayors uh, in a very long time. Uh, I hosted them, uh, and there was a, a spread in essence earlier in the year um, by Lyles from Charlotte, North Carolina, is going to be joining us, uh, for example, a, a new mayor. And we're really excited that uh, she is a young new mayor, a young new mayor. Karen Wilson Freeman uh, is going to join us from Gary, Indiana, who's just outstanding. Uh, a number of mayors who are doing this work, too. Uh, and we can learn from each other. Uh, Dr. Nesbitt's colleagues who lead their departments of health um, are all focused on how we can have a very substantive conversation and on Wednesday the Honorable Valerie Jarrett absolutely is also going to come and join you absolutely to discuss this most important issue well when I when we told her that you would be moderating a panel she said she wanted to be on it (laughs) I didn't believe this but she said she she didn't think that you two had had the chance to connect and I said this what a perfect time um, this would be to connect so Valerie Jarrett of course was um, President Obama's uh, senior advisor um, but she also, and I had forgotten this, uh, worked in a city. Chicago. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I think she served three mayoral administrations right. in Chicago. Started off with Daly. That's mm-hmm. right. So Boss she Daly. gets uh, municipal government. Uh, and she was also very active in uh, leading President Obama's Commission on Women and Girls. So uh, she uh, helped lead the work at a national level uh, focused on women and girls. And uh, we are just delighted. She continues to live in D.C. I know yes. she's still a Chicago resident, but uh, <laughs> I, what a great way to get her involved in uh, uh, something that has a local and national touch. And we will be able to see her there Wednesday, Wednesday as Wednesday. well. 9 a.m. is, what, is when now it starts. Your family listeners, uh-huh. family of listeners, do whatever you tell them, them to do. You're Dominique <laughs> the, the Diva. diva. Wednesday. Tell them where you want them on Wednesday. Wednesday, 9 a.m. We all want you at the Maternal and Infant Health Summit. It's a big deal. It's the inaugural. Yes. It's the very first one. So whether it's you or someone you know, like Miss H says, someone you know that's pregnant, your neighbor, your sorority sister, whomever, if you're able to come and get this information for them, that makes it even better because we have to share it thank you. Uh, with each other. Thank you, Dominique. Thank You'll be you at the so convention much. center. Yes, thank you so much. One quick um, 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 closing question for mm-hmm. you, Dr. Ness, but I was so impressed when I saw how many programs that you're in charge of. Again, isn't that unique 
for a city like Washington, D.C.? Yes, we're very proud of the work that we've been able to do here. Um, but one of the things we're most proud of is the amount of collaborative partnerships we have to get that work done. Uh, we do it with other agencies here in the government. It's not just about what the Department of Health does, but also with our Department of Employment Services does to help our dads uh, be employed and parenting responsibly. Also with our uh, education partners do to help our families be able to uh, get back to work and increase their educational opportunities, and also with our grassroots and community-based organizations are able to do uh, to reach families um, where they are uh, when the government can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we have a great uh, framework here in the, in, in the District of Columbia. And as the mayor mentioned before, uh, it's a best practice that we hope will spread across the nation and really be able to make change one community at a time. If someone wants to reach out to you, uh, Dr. Nesma, how would they be able to do that? Uh, so I'm available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Know, uh -huh. <laughs> you, you can easily reach she us. She lives above uh, the practice. <laughs> yes, that's what I'm looking for. No, <laughs> right I, above the easy department of health. It's you can easily business. reach us through all of our uh, government websites. Uh, if you click on that Ask the Director button, I, I respond to our, my own emails directly. Absolutely. Well, thank you oh, so thank you. much. I like that. Mayor Bowser, thank, thank you so thank much. You, and thank you for doing this for women here in D.C. And really, this is just setting the standard for the rest of the country to hop on board because this is a really big and very important initiative. And thank you, Ms. Kathy Hughes. Mm -hmm. The rest of the, this information, of course, is right there on KYSDC.com. But we want you at the Walter E. Washington Convention Center on Wednesday at 9 a.m. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.